Okay, so let's dive into the first exercise. And um, traditionally, the first exercise in any um, program that where you're writing uh, some scripts or anything like that uh, is going to be that you want to have your computer tell you, hello world. So that's where we're going to start. And this is all that we're going to um, develop. Some of the uh, program programming language we see there on the left is actually uh, extra. Uh, so it's going to be very simple. And um, what we're focusing on here is that we want to say, hello world. Okay, so um, let's make sure that we have our uh, processing application installed. Um, it's going to come downloaded as a zip file. Uh, if you went to the uh, processing website and went to the download section, you should have downloaded version 2 beta 7. And based on whichever operating system you're using, you want to download that. So if you're using a Windows system, um, we are going to um, find our download section, our downloads folder. And what I've done is uh, on my C drive, and whether or not I'm using 32-bit or 64-bit, inside of that program files uh, folder, I've made a processing subfolder. So here's my unzipped download from processing. And it's got uh, the application as well as a series of folders. Um, so unlike most other things that you'll download, this doesn't have an installer per se. So I like to drag my whole folder that comes um, down that I download, unzip it, and drag it on into this folder here. And that way, um, if a new version comes up, I'll do the same thing. And uh, for the version we're using today, 2 beta 7, I'll just go down to open that folder, go down to the processing.exe file. And for ease, ease of con for convenience sake, I'm going to right click and say pin to the start menu or, and or pin to taskbar. Because whenever we launch processing, we're really just doing the, the, essentially the same thing as double clicking this exe file. Um, so there we have it. It's launched successfully. I've pinned it to my start menu, so it's also here. Um, I've got the previous stable version of um, processing version 1 here, um, because sometimes things that you find on the web references will be programmed in that particular version. So here's my current version 2 application. And if I click that, it should launch as well here. Okay, so hopefully everyone had um, was able to install this uh, easily and successfully. If you had any questions about that, go ahead and drop them into the questions window and Ronnie will help you out with that. Okay, so we have processing installed now. And um, there's kind of two aspects to what we're going to be doing with this application. Um, on the left, this is our sketch pad, right? And we'll be uh, writing some scripts here, some programs. And um, you can see that it's got a particular um, highlighting, uh, set of highlighting settings for keywords. And on the, um, once we hit play, we're going to get some visual output, right? So let's take, talk a little bit more about what the processing development environment is. Um, so this is the, um, the, a kind of screen grab of the application we just launched. And it's broken down into a couple of uh, different areas in terms of this interface for us as the user. Um, so the first area here across the top is the toolbar. Um, below that we have tabs. And each tab will have some text which is where we'll be writing our programs. So there's our text editor. Then there's a message area in this light gray bar. And then in the, in the black area, this is called the text area or the console. Right? And if we've hit play, we're also going to get another window that's uh, floating that is the display window. OK, so um, once we've written our script or um, our code in the text editor, we're going to use these uh, icons in the toolbar to enact a series of actions, right? Whenever we're ready to uh, see what's gonna, what our program will produce, we'll hit run, that display window opens up, and 
at whenever we hit run, it's going to compile the code we've written, open the display window, and run the program inside. Um, at the same time, we might want to, um, after, after we've started our program, stop it, so that terminates it. This allows us to create a new sketch, to open an existing sketch, save the sketch that we're working on currently, and or export our application for embedding an HTML file. So this exports the applet as a compiled entity. Okay. And in addition to processing being the actual environment in which we write our programs, it's also um, a community that has a set of online resources. So if you go to the help menu uh, or you go to the pro back to the processing website, um, there's an exhibition of interesting projects that are using processing. Um, reference and learning are going to give you some really great um, links and um, uh, kind of method information based on uh, how to use processing. And then download is where you hopefully downloaded your um, the current version that we'll be using. And then there's some additional things that you can purchase. I think there's t-shirts and books here, as well as here a forum and wiki that are um, additional resources that are user-based for um, the broad community of processing, which is really supportive and um, really interesting as a community. Okay, so we've, um, we've talked about what processing is. Um, we understand the interface a little bit. The last thing we want to note before we actually start working with our program is we need to understand a little bit about what pseudocode and comments are. So pseudocode is the plain language description of the design objectives and a loose outline of the steps necessary to achieve those objectives. So one of the key things we want to keep in mind when we're starting to um, work with programming is that we can't try and build the most complex program right away from scratch. Uh, we want to break things down into smaller parts, and a great way to do that is to develop the pseudocode necessary to develop those programs those programs, right? So that's an outline that we can understand as humans. And then the, the next step would be just to translate that into uh, the specific language that's required in whatever programming uh, environment we're using, uh, such as Java. So um, a way to embed our pseudocode into our application is to use what are called comments. And comments in processing, at least, are um, indicated by a double backslash, and that means that the, uh, the computer, when it compiles our program, will ignore that line. So this is a way for us to add notes into our, into our file or um, to include our pseudocode to describe what we're trying to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, uh, open up processing and start our first, and make our first um, program. So I'm going to open See, I'm going to this.